Oi, pessoal. Bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, aí, dependendo do horário que vocês estão assistindo esse treinamento. Uh, muito obrigada pela atenção de vocês, pela disponibilidade. Meu nome é Andréia. Para quem não me conhece ainda, né, eu sou representante da 3W aqui no Brasil. Fico baseada na cidade de São Paulo. E nós da 3W representamos mais de 40 escolas particulares nos Estados Unidos. Hoje eu estou aqui com o Mike e com o Rodrigo, que representam a escola Hilton Head Prep, que fica na Carolina do Sul. Então, o Rodrigo é brasileiro, trabalha junto com o Mike na escola, que ele é o diretor do programa internacional. E eles vão contar um pouquinho mais aí sobre a escola, tirar as dúvidas de vocês é, sobre todos os detalhes e como que eles oferecem o programa de high school para os nossos alunos. Então, agora eu vou passar a palavra para o Mike. É, e aí, depois, se surgirem dúvidas, né, depois desse treinamento, fiquem à vontade para me contatar por e-mail, por WhatsApp, por Skype, enfim, como for melhor para vocês. Mike, all yours now. Thank you very much. We're from Hilton Head Prep. Uh, I'm the head of student life and international programming. Uh, Rodrigo is the assistant director of international programming. He also teaches some classes, um, some Spanish classes, and also helps in our soccer programs. So we're just going to go over some information about our school. Um, so as you know, we're Hilton Head Prep. We're located in Hilton Head, South Carolina. We're an island, but we're not like Hawaii. Uh, if you can see the map, there's a little yellow line that's a bridge that connects us to the mainland. Uh, we're very close to several universities and we're very close to two historical cities in the United States. Uh, on weekends, quite often we'll offer trips to those cities and do various things from paintball to trampoline parks to hockey games, basketball games. Uh, we try to uh, offer the students different things to do on the weekends. Uh, our closest airport is Savannah International Airport. It's about 45 minutes away. And we're very much an outdoor community. A lot of people like to go for bike rides, walks, runs, we're very close to the beach. Our houses are close to the beach, our campus is close to the beach, and we try to take full advantage. Uh, a lot of the students like to go there, hang out, go for walks, play soccer, play volleyball, uh, and just enjoy the sunshine and, and Hilton Head. A lot of people from all over the US like to come to where we are because it's so pretty, calm, safe, and just an overall nice place to be. Um, our niche ratings this year are, are fantastic. We're the number one college prep private high school in South Carolina number two K through 12 private school in South Carolina, number one boarding school in South Carolina, number one K 12 private school in Beaufort County. And the last one we're very proud of, uh, we are in the top 13% K through 12 private schools in America. Uh, that is up from 15%. We were in the top 15% last year. We're very excited to be in the top 13% this year. And we're looking to improve uh, even further next year. Just some quick information about our school. We are co-ed. Uh, we've got boys and girls. We're not religiously affiliated. Uh, we're just over 50 years old. Have whole school, pre-K through 12, about 400 students, uh, and around 40, 45 international students, and 20 to 30 bo uh, boarding students in our own boarding program. And we have houses, not dorms, and we'll explain that uh, just a little bit later. 17 different AP courses, and like many independent private schools in the US, we have 100% uh, four-year college placement and very small classrooms. Our ratios are 12 to 14 students per class. And that gives our teachers, our faculty, an opportunity to get to know our students on a very personal level. They'll know their strengths, they'll know their weaknesses, they'll know how they can help the, the students in the classroom uh, to achieve their, their academic goals. Our boarding program is a little different than a lot of other schools. We don't have dorms, we don't have big dorms, we have beautiful vacation homes. Typically, they're separated into male and female houses with two to three students per room. The three person room is generally very, very big room. Uh, they all have their own bathrooms. The only situation we have where they don't have their own bathroom, we have a two person room and another two person room and they share a bathroom. Uh, each of our houses has a swimming pool uh, and we have full time house parents that their main job is to take care of the students. They watch over the students, they pay attention to how they're doing academically and socially. Uh, their main role is in their title, house parents. They are the parents of the students while they're with us and they pay attention to how they're doing in the classroom. They'll reach out to the teachers directly uh, if there's any questions about grades, uh, and they'll communicate with the agency and the families as well to keep everybody informed of what's going on. Our houses are not on campus, but it's maybe a five to 10 minute walk to school. Some students will ride bikes to school, and we do have a bus that will pick them up before the day and take them to school and also take them home at the end of the day as well. And if you can see the slideshow, the picture in the background here is the actual beach. Uh, that is about 50 meters from one of our boarding homes. So our beaches are very, very nice. 
just a quick uh, look at our boarding homes. Um, our one house, the one on the left, holds about 16 or 17 students. The one on the right holds nine students. Uh, and there's just a couple pictures of the social areas, a pool. Uh, the bottom is one of the bathrooms in one of our boarding houses. And so uh, you can see they're not your typical dorms. Uh, some dorms are just cinder blocks and, and uh, aren't as comfortable. We, we want our students to feel like they're, they're coming home. We want them to be excited about coming home. And when they go home for the summer, we want them to be excited to, to come back and, and be in their house and with their house parents and their friends as well. Oi, pessoal. Rodrigo aqui, tudo bem? Eu sou o assistente diretor da Hilton Head Prep, eu trabalho junto com o Mike. E só para dar mais uma ideia da de como como é a vida de um estudante, a minha esposa ela é uma house parent. Ela, 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 a gente mora nessa casa na direita, tá no topo, essa casa da direita na, no vídeo. E a gente mora embaixo na master suite. E em cima tem quatro quartos muito grandes, com closets muito grandes, é, banheiros muito grandes para os adolescentes. E a gente mora com eles. Então a gente cria uma relação muito boa, a gente joga jogos, nas casas tem ping pong tem pimbolim, todas as casas tem piscinas. E, então eles vivem uma vida muito, muito privilegiada. A minha casa é mais perto da praia. A minha casa fica na areia, se, não dá para ver com essa foto, mas atrás da casa já é areia, então fica na praia. E um, uma coisa legal é que toda noite, toda manhã, quando não tem nenhum barulho de carro, a gente consegue escutar a, o oceano, as ondas, os, uh, o ambiente e os animais. E a outra casa é pertinho também, é duas quadras da praia. Não dá nem 200 metros. Então eles têm uma vida muito boa lá, muito legal. So we have three uh, daily schedules at our school. And as we go, why we have so many different schedules. But first I want to share just a typical day. Students get up. Uh, they may have house chores in the morning, classes at 8 a.m. Uh, we have a 30 minute break every day. And that, during that time, students can hang out in the gymnasium, play basketball, uh, buy something to eat, go see a teacher if they need more help, uh, and just hang out with their friends if they want to. And then our lunch is at 1.05 p.m., and our day ends at 2.25. At that time, they can go to a club if they want to. Uh, typically, we require students to be in at least one club. And if they don't have a club, they can go see a teacher and get more help if they need to. Students will go home at that time once they're all done. Uh, dinner at the boarding house is usually around 5.30, 6 o'clock. And then Sunday through Thursday, we have study hall, a two-hour study hall every night. And this is an opportunity for the students to sit down to do their work. Uh, they can often ask each other questions. They're in some of the same classes together, and they can kind of tutor each other and, and help each other out, and the house parents are there as well. On Wednesdays, we change it up. Study hall is from 3.30 to 5.30. And then in the evening, the students have the opportunity to go out if they want to go to the store and get supplies they need, or a lot of them actually like to go out to dinner uh, and just uh, go hang out with their friends and socialize. And then after that, it's just free time for them to hang out. Uh, a lot of times they'll play games with the house parents or just talk to each other. Uh, and then it's lights out, they go to bed. So these are two of our other schedules we have. We have three sports academies that we offer, and we're working to offer two additional academies next year. Right now, we have a soccer academy, and their schedule uh, at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m., they go and they work out in the morning, uh, practicing soccer, their skills, improving, getting better, and that, that academy goes Monday through Friday, uh, and they join the academic day around 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning, and then they also finish at uh, 2.25, and they're done for the day. Uh, the Volleyball Academy is the opposite. It starts their day at 8 a.m. with everybody else, and they finish at 1.05 p.m., go to lunch, then they go to their academy that goes 1.45 until 3.15. Uh, we design them that way on purpose. That way, if a student has an interest outside of soccer or volleyball, they can still participate. If they want to be in the fine arts show, uh, they can go be in the show. If they want to uh, play basketball, they can be on the basketball team. If they want to play, uh, on the football team, the American football team, uh, they can do that as well. So we, we design them this way on purpose. They still graduate on time. They can still take AP classes. Um, they, they're regular full-time students. We just have the ability to accommodate their schedules for them to improve in a sport that they're passionate about. The other academy we currently have is a baseball academy. Uh, and this one runs the same time as a volleyball academy. I realize baseball isn't always as popular here, but you never know. You might get a student who wants to try it out or 
or learn how to play baseball or already is into baseball. So our campus is about 16 acres. The picture in the middle is of our field house. Most of our basketball games, volleyball games take place. Uh, we'll do student events in there. Uh, sometimes we'll go in and have a field day where we play games um, and just do different activities. Our weight room is also in that building. Monday through Thursday, students are welcome to go after school. The weight room's open till 4.15, 4.30, and they're able to work out there if they want to. And we also open it on weekends as well. The bottom right picture is Rhett's Garden. We like to share that one because that's a great social area for the students. They can go there and do their homework. They can just hang out. Sometimes teachers will go out and hold a class in that area. It's just a nice relaxing place to be on campus. Uh, the upper left picture, just wanted to put that in there because art is very important to our school. Uh, our, we show our students artwork all over campus. At the end of the year, students are welcome to submit artwork. And if it's selected, the school actually buys the artwork from the student and we hang it up on campus, put their name there, and it's there 20 years from now, if they want to bring their children back, their artwork will be hanging on our campus. So our student life, uh, we, we try and, and make our boarding program like home. Uh, we understand that many of the students are very far from home. So we, we want them to, as I mentioned earlier, look forward to coming home. So on the weekends, we plan lots of activities for them. Uh, we'll do a dock party. If you see in the upper right picture, the young man there holding a fish, uh, that's a dock party. We take the students there. They can go fishing, kayaking, paddle boarding. We'll take them out uh, see, see dolphins on a dolphin tour. Uh, but it's, it's quite common that when you're just on the beach, you'll look out in the ocean and see dolphins uh, swimming and, and going through the water. Uh, we also on our beaches, uh, sea turtles, big sea turtles will come up and lay their eggs in their nests. And a lot of times the science teachers will take the students out and they can watch them hatch and, and go down to the ocean. Uh, the middle picture there, uh, he's actually cooking and he's from Brazil. Uh, we divide the students into teams of two or three, and then twice a month, uh, the teams will rotate, but they'll cook for the boarding program, and they'll invite a, a faculty member and their family over to the house to eat with everybody. And it's a great way for our faculty to come over and see the students in their boarding home, and for the students to share some of their, their food culture with us. Uh, we buy the food, the school buys the food, uh, and they, they cook it, and it's, it's actually quite good. And then we invite our day students over as well uh, to the various activities and parties we have. We'll have a game night and we'll have some of our day students come over and they'll hang out and they'll play. Uh, and it's a great way for them to interact with our boarding students and make friends. And hopefully uh, they'll make friends outside the boarding program and go visit them on the weekends and go hang out with them uh, as well. So we have many athletic teams and for being a small school like we are, we have on average, probably 12 to 15 kids that will sign to play college sports at the next level. A lot of them are division one, uh, some, some of them are division two. Uh, and this year we've had so far 10, and we're anticipating another uh, five or so, if not more by the end of the school year. Um, our teams do very well in the competitions. We win the region a lot. Uh, we win state titles. Our girls tennis team, state champions, seven out of the last eight years. Our girls golf team just won state championship this last uh, fall season, uh, and they won the state championship. The boys team won the state championship uh, last spring. Baseball were regional champs, uh, almost made it to states. Uh, the basketball team were state champions last year as well. Our girls swim team, this is the uh, first year we had swimming back, and they competed and they did very well in the program as, uh, this past season. So if, if there's a sport you enjoy doing, we've most likely got it. Uh, and our kids enjoy being on the team. And that's a great way to get outside of the boarding house and meet other people uh, and, and work on your English and, and socialize. So as I mentioned, this is our clubs. This is just a small sample of the clubs we have. We generally have over 30 different clubs, anything from student leadership like prefects to um, student council, which is student government. Uh, we have um, community service clubs, uh, Zanta, Fellowship of Christian Athletes will do things for the community as well. Uh, we have Model UN. Uh, we have a Walking Club. We have many, many different clubs. And if we, if we do not have a club that you're interested in, they're student driven. So we can help you start a club. If there's something that you are passionate about and it makes sense, we'll, we're happy to help you start a club. That's where a lot of our, our clubs have come from, is from the students themselves. So we have, a great college guidance office. 
uh, who get to know the students very well, get to know them individually, and help guide them through the process every step of the way. Uh, just because a student uh, gets accepted to, for instance, Duke University, doesn't mean that that's the right school for them. Uh, so our, our college guidance office will, will help them find a school that matches their academics, their social abilities, uh, and, and just help them through the entire process. And, and we have a 100% college acceptance rate to four-year universities. Um, I can't say enough good things about them. I'm actually, my son is a junior right now, and we're going through this process with him, and they've been wonderful uh, every step of the way. Rodrigo, você pode contar um pouquinho da sua experiência na escola, como que é mais ou menos o seu trabalho e como você pode ajudar os alunos em relação ao processo de universidade? Com certeza. Então, na escola, a gente chama, a gente faz, a gente wear many hats, né? Cada, cada pessoa faz muitas coisas na escola, porque é uma escola bem da comunidade. Eu sou professor de espanhol para crianças de 5 a 9 anos, é, sou técnico de futebol e também eu sou assistente e diretor do, do Mike, do Mike Fogg. E um dos meus trabalhos na escola é ajudar os estudantes com o processo para a faculdade. Tá, eu vou dar um exemplo do, do brasileiro. No, no slide anterior, você viu um menino na a foto do meio. É, ele, Esse aqui. Ele, o nome dele é Nicolas, ele é brasileiro. E ele chegou lá nos Estados Unidos e sem, sem praticar nenhum esporte. E a nossa escola não força ninguém a praticar esporte. A gente só motiva as pessoas. Porque por através do esporte você consegue ganhar muita bolsa de estudo nos Estados Unidos. E eu fiz todo o processo, eu sei como funciona. E, e eu conversando com o Nicolas, a gente sentou, conversamos sobre o processo, o que, que ele quer, as metas deles, e a gente descobriu que, através do esporte, a gente conseguiria ajudar ele a entrar numa faculdade. Ele quer uma faculdade muito boa, ranqueada nos Estados Unidos, e ele quer engenharia química. O que, que a gente fez? A gente falou, pô, vamos tentar futebol americano, porque ele é grande, ele é forte, ele gosta do esporte e ele entrou no meio da temporada, ele foi muito bem e ele terminou a temporada como titular. Então agora ele está amando o esporte, ele já está treinando para a temporada, para a próxima temporada do ano que vem e ele tem muita chance de ganhar bolsa. Por quê? Porque ele foi um aluno que que abriu as portas, ele entrou para as oportunidades, tentou o que a gente falou, ele nos ouviu e agora ele tem muita chance de receber uma bolsa. Tá? Então esse é um dos meus trabalhos. Eu A gente senta com os alunos a gente vê quais são as metas deles, eles querem ir para uma faculdade nos Estados Unidos, eles precisam de bolsa, é, o quanto de bolsa eles precisam, é, eles não querem ir para uma faculdade nos Estados Unidos. Então, a gente senta e conversa com, sobre o processo. Né? O que você viu no, nos slides, a escola tem muitos clubes, muitos clubes de liderança, é, agora a gente está pensando em fazer um clube de drones, né, que os drones são tão muito frequentes nos Estados Unidos. É, então, essa, essa bagagem, esse pacote ajuda muito na aplicação de uma faculdade. Tá? E a gente sempre motiva os adolescentes a não aplicar só para uma faculdade. Aplicar para 10, 15, 20. Por quê? Se eles, vamos dizer que eles aplicam para 20. Recebem 15 nãos e 5 sims. Nesses 5 sims, eles podem negociar. Eles podem ver qual faculdade é melhor. Eles podem conversar com os técnicos ou com os diretores acadêmicos. E podem também ver qual que é a bolsa que mais interessa a eles. Entendeu? Então, nesse processo, a escola é nota 10, porque, como vocês viram, 100% dos alunos, eles são aceitos em faculdades, e aí a gente faz a peneira, né? a gente vê é, qual funil, qual faculdade interessa mais o aluno. E a gente, até hoje, a gente não teve nenhum problema de mandar para um aluno para uma faculdade, ele não tenha gostado e não tenha se dado bem. Tá? Então, a Hilton Red Prep, nesse sentido, ela é muito boa. Perfeito. Obrigada, Rodrigo. Thanks, Mike. Do you have anything else? To... No? Uh, ok, não, não. I think you covered everything. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Obrigada, pessoal, pela atenção. Se vocês tiverem qualquer dúvida, é, podem entrar em contato comigo, com a Natália. Nós estamos à disposição para ajudá-los em qualquer situação. Ok, obrigada. Bye, thank you very much. Tchau, tchau, obrigado.